Thank you, Roland, and thank you all for coming. Um, this evening, I'd like to uh, tell you about the story of Fair FX and where we've come from, our journey from humble beginnings to the £2 billion plus turnover business we are today, and hope you, hopefully give you a little bit of insight into our strategy, what's a, what, how we've achieved this, and where we're going in the future. Um, so a little bit of a, a time map here. Um, started off, um, I guess, as a what you class as a, a disruptor um, back in the day of 2007, uh, even in the early days of internet, um, and certainly not apps and such like things like that. Um, the business was actually founded to disrupt online travel money. So that's literally physically posting notes in the uh, Royal Mail um, to try and disrupt the airport bureau de change. So typically, as everyone knows, airport bureau de change is very, very expensive. Um, and the whole idea was we would post it m more cheaply, more efficiently, to sa save time and money to the consumer. Um, and I think s t saving time and money is a theme that's continued throughout the business and as the business has grown. And hopefully, you'll see that um, throughout the presentation. Um, as the sort of business grew up, um, different products started to be bolted on. So we started to gain customers through the uh, cash in the post. Uh, I think the biggest turning point was actually the, um, albeit is not actually on this chart, was the prepaid card. Um, and started um, developing the prepaid card program for, to help travelers who were spending. And what that really did was, yes, you need a little bit of travel money when you go abroad, but actually for most of your travel spend, you were using a credit or debit card. Um, and that allowed us to capture far more customers and far, a far bigger share of the market. And that really catapulted us up to half a million customers, and actually quite quickly. Um, the FX theme has continued onwards, and, and hopefully I'll show you that actually the business has now has diversified a fair bit away from that. And in fact, about 35% of our revenue is nothing to do with FX. So the, the brand name Fairfax actually is a little bit of a misnomer. Um, things might change there. Um, one of the key, I think, sort of points in, in the history and, and where we really started to grow and, and where strategy was defined was the acquisition of an e-money license. Now, the e-money license, basically what that does is allow us to issue our own cards. And throughout this journey, obviously, cost savings and, and efficiencies, we're always trying to drive. But it, obtaining the e-money license, which is no, no easy thing to do, um, really helped us along that path. And it, it sort of shaped the strategy for, for the coming years about cost savings, efficiency, and bringing as much in-house as possible. Um, ultimately, there's particularly in payments, is a very complicated uh, food chain. Um, there are a lot of uh, different companies involved, and the more you can uh, do yourself, the 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 obviously the better margins that you get. Ultimately, um, the uh, acquisition of uh, Card One Banking, and then just after that, City Forex really scaled the business as well. So the Card One Banking, nothing to do with FX at all. Um, what it gave us was uh, effectively the ability to uh, build and provide full service bank accounts. So um, Card One Banking, based in Chester, offered uh, their product, which is effectively a debit card, uh, direct debits, everything that a bank does bar lending, um, to a lower, lower demographic consumer um, target. Um, what we wanted to do with that business was, aside from build on what they already had, was actually lift it to a higher demographic uh, target market and also to corporate as well. Um, and our vision very much um, for the future is, is not dismissing the consumer at all, but actually a focus on the SME and corporate market. We, we believe that's where 
value is to be had, and actually where we're, where we're able to solve more um, issues that these small businesses have. Um, very recently, um, signed a partnership agreement with uh, MCB, which is Metropolitan Commercial Bank in the US, um, and I think states are uh, intention to uh, internationalize the business. Um, the US can be a very, very tricky place to go out and, and build um, a network, um, obviously regulatory, 52 states, very expensive, very time consuming. So we've done it in a, um, a more conservative, but actually I would say smarter fashion by signing a, signing a JV. Um, it gets us to market quicker, it allows us to market in all states uh, under their regulatory umbrella, and it allows us to test the market, refine it, make sure that we get it right before committing too much money. Um, what's not on here, and it's, it's literally hot off the press this week, is uh, we received our credit broker license, uh, which effectively allows us to broke credit uh, to our one million customers that, that we hit earlier this year, um, or back end of last year. So uh, again, diversifying our portfolio of products um, to uh, ensure that the income and, and revenue stream is protected. Um, I think one of the key things that I want to bring out of this, this presentation and about the business is the trust pilot score here. Everything we do is with, the consu with our customers in mind, um, whether that's product development, whether customer service, uh, testing, everything. Um, and I think that's really showed out by our trust pi pilot rating, uh, 9.3 out of 10, which is fantastic. Um, and you can compare some of our competitors um, it's freely available online and, and you see half that score. So it really is an endorsement of our products, uh, our service-led uh, ethos. Um, and again, with all our expanding product portfolio and differentiated products and services, we, the emphasis is very much on the service. So we're not just churning out product on app, app only. Um, we're, we're making sure that it's multi-platform. So if you're a customer, whether a corporate or individual, you can um, transact with FairFX on any platform you like. So, and, and in fact, a lot of our customers on the currency exchange side, so transfer money transfer business, are still want to do it over the telephone. They still value speaking to someone. They, they value the, the guidance. They, they value talking to them about you know, when is a good time to, to buy or good time to sell. Um, so that's very, very important for the business. Um, one of the, another um, key point, actually, which I've missed on the, on the chart there, is the integration with the Bank of England. So that allows us to effectively uh, send faster payments directly via the Bank of England. I think we're the number five non-banked company in the UK, uh, so, which is a huge endorsement. It was a year-long programme. It's a testament to our, our technology, our compliance, uh, and our general operational rigour. Um, a lot of, a fair few co companies I know got rejected um, on, for various reasons, but um, we were tremendously proud of that. Um, and I think stands us in very, very good stead um, for the future. Um, team. So payments uh, generally is quite a complicated business and, and Fair Effects as it has grown has now got several different um, product lines, divisions, um, so we needed and need a, a very strong management team with uh, most important sector knowledge and deep sector knowledge at that. So we've now assembled uh, what we believe is a, is a fantastic team. Um, each individual has their own area of responsibility, travel money, uh, international payments, um, finance, um, and each, each member of the executive board, which is the top, the top two lines here, um, all have, have um, a lot of industry experience and backed up by uh, a, a very um, experienced non-executive board as well. Um, <coughs> there we go. Um, so a little, a little bit about our, our sort of depth of product. Um, as I mentioned, we've, we've 
expanded over the last few years. Um, and, and corporate and retail um, at the moment actually equates for about 50-50 uh, on, on revenue side. Um, but as I say, focus is very much on the corporate side um, going forward. Um, the different products that we offer now, um, the traditional retail prepaid card, which is the currency card, um, the uh, online platform for uh, uh, FX transfers, um, a current account on the back of the card one banking business, and Bureau de Change. So since our acquisition of City Forex, uh, we acquired also retail stores as well, um, which actually intuitively you would think they must be dying, but actually it does help with brand awareness and, and also uh, online presence as well. So, um, for example, um, some of the uh, price aggregators, Money Supermarket, for example, put more value if you've got a, uh, the ability to uh, go and pick up your order. Um, so that does help us, and, and we uh, definitely we get some cross-sell business from those as well. On the business side, um, the uh, business current account, um, which is a very exciting prospect. I think the, the one bit here that I'd like to pull out actually is the corporate expense management platform, which originally was built uh, simply for companies that are sending people overseas traveling abroad um, to try and control their expenses. As it happens, um, most of the companies that we, that we onboard and we acquire have no FX requirements at all. And all they want to do is use our platform and the payment method to control expenses while, sp uh, while spending in the UK. Um, and companies seem to love it, particularly CFOs seem to love it. Uh, you know, they can turn, turn cards off, off at the click of a button if their employees are, are spending uh, in a naughty way. Um, and they can see literally live transactions coming through. So it means that, for example, if you're a film production company, you've got a uh, set budget um, and you can actually really control it, put it by cost center, and it's a fantastic piece of kit. And you know, aside from the FX pitch, which you get a great rate anyway, the rest of it's completely free. Um, where we make our money is on the interchange. So every time they go into a shop, restaurant, whatever, um, we will make a percentage back on that transaction. So we actually don't need to charge for the platform uh, and we don't need the FX, which is, which is fantastic. Um, and it obviously opens the market up and gives us a much bigger uh, pool to fish in. Um, some of the highlights for this year. So, as I mentioned, million customers, which was a hu huge uh, benchmark for us and always has been, and for a lot of companies in our space as well. The big million customers is, is always, uh, always a great achievement. Um, the acquisition, um, City Forex as well. Um, but I think that probably the, the, the biggest thing is the Bank of England because that really just shows the rigor uh, of the business. Um, very good year last year. Turnover was up 111%, 2.3 billion now, um, with revenue at 26 million, um, and EBITDA 7.5 million. Um, we've stated to the city, city we want to remain profitable, um, and, and we will certainly continue to do so. Um, a little bit about our strategy now. Um, I th it's sort of threefold, really. Um, scale, uh, efficiency, and differentiation. And the core backbone, as I mentioned, is customer experience and, and making sure the customer um, always comes first. On the differentiation side, obviously, it's product, um, the, the, the number of products now we have out there, and that will continue to grow and continue to expand. Ultimately, we're trying to offer the very, very best customer experience and really try and meet a customer's needs. So not just inventing stuff just because we think it's a nice idea and we haven't got a, 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 a little room of pointy heads thinking up whizzy ideas. Um, this is genuinely customer feedback. They come to us and say, listen, wouldn't it be good if, if you guys did this? An example of that, for example, is on the corporate expense. A load of customers said, listen, we, we love it, we love it, but we want you to, we want to be able to photo our receipts and just upload them onto the platform against the transaction. Uh, literally two months later, we had that ability and they were able to do it. Same with VAT, VAT reclaims as well. 
Um, the efficiency side comes a, a little bit with scale, actually. So uh, if I touch on scale first, that's about um, the, the cost of doing business. Um, the larger you are, the, particularly in payments, the cheaper it is to, uh, to, to, to transact. So this is with counterparties, with banks, um, with, with various suppliers. Um, obviously, the more volume you, you do, the unit cost goes down. And that's what we're trying to achieve with scale. So, you know, it, it's a fantastic time in the market. Um, that there may well be other acquisitions uh, in, along the way, um, but ultimately we are trying to achieve scale. Um, and therefore there comes efficiency, and the efficiency is definitely driven by technology. And there's been quite a big investment over the last couple of years of, of technology um, and making sure that we're, we're investing for the future. Um, and as I say, the core, the, at the core of this is the customer experience and making sure the customer's always right. And actually, over the last two, three years, we've done a lot of customer forums, um, customer feedback. We've had customers into the office, literally sit them down in front of a PC or a, on the app, video them how they, how they interact with the products. And so we can learn how to improve it and get their feedback and, and adjust uh, accordingly. Um, so that's, that's very, very important for us. Um, a little bit more about the efficiency side of things. Um, as I say, the technology is, is going to be the backbone of that. Um, we've invested heavily um, in, in throughout 2018 and 19, actually, um, improving uh, margins, trying to make the process as straight through as possible. Um, whilst, you know, always have a requirement for, for people, that makes the business. Um, ultimately, we're trying to make it as technology-led. So an example of that is, is API automation. Um, more and more companies and more and more of our partners are requiring uh, us to be um, disseminating information via API. So that might be exchange rates, that might be comparison rates, statements, etc. cetera. Uh, and regula regulation actually is requiring it as well. Um, open banking is coming along very quickly. Um, so it's all AP API led. So as ourselves and many, many other companies actually, um, and not just in this space, are required and, and need to invest heavily and to make sure that their, their, their services are available to others via API. Um, and and cross-sellers as well is, is obviously a, a, an obvious one for us. We've got a whole heap of different products. We've got a very different customer segment, um, customer base segmented, um, and there's a big crossover in their requirements. So, for example, you might be a company director who you've taken a Fairfax card, but actually you could easily have a corporate expense platform for your company, or you might, have a, a, you might be buying a property in Spain but actually your company has a requirement to uh, pay suppliers in, in Turkey. So there's, there's a lot of crossover within our, our customer base. And obviously, cost, cost, cost of acquisition is, is, can be very high. And the more we can generate within our own ecosystem, um, obviously benefits the business um, tremendously. Uh, scale, um, I've, I've sort of touched on the interna internationalization aspect of the business. Um, we are looking at that. Um, the US is one of the first, um, but we're looking at corridor by corridor uh, and, and being quite specific in the types of area that we're, we're looking at. Um, so it's not just a general globalization. Um, it's quite targeted. Um, uh, customer experience, again, core, core, to, our, core to our offering. Um, we're, we're designing each and every product and, every, and, and our website in, in, with, a, with a global design in mind, a global language in mind. And that's not saying we're just going to put it everywhere, but it means that it's transportable. And actually, in this day and age, everyone, it should appeal to everyone. Um, and we're spending a lot of time and effort doing that and making sure the language is right um, and trying to maximize our, our acquisition rates uh, via that tool. Um, the customer research I sort of touched on earlier, having customers in, um, having surveys, it all helps us do that. 
Um, and, and key, I think, is integration, integration of all our products. Ultimately, the, the end goal is to have sort of a one portal with all our products available, and you, you pick and choose so it's very modular. And that way, it's a great, easy way of cross-selling products, but also for convenience for the customer as well, that they can have everything within, within one area. Um, very briefly, uh, sort of touched on these uh, acquisitions, uh, could well happen, um, internationalization markets, uh, more product development, further products being released, uh, and, and customers, um, continued customer acquisition. So we are on track for uh, the first quarter. Um, so things are going pretty well. We're very happy with the product development. Um, great to see this week the, the uh, share price react positively to the uh, credit uh, broker license news. So that's great. Um, we continue to remain uh, profitable and focused. Um, and we continue to uh, deliver shareholder returns. And thank you very much indeed, just in time. Thank you very much indeed, James. Um, before we get started, there's a couple of questions on, on, on share. Uh, you mentioned the share price responding positively to some news. What was the share price, the market cap of the company? Can you give a little overview on the, the share register, uh, the, any institutions or, or what yeah, absolutely. management holdings? Absolutely. Might be? Um, so the share market cap as of this evening was 200.2 million. Um, we, uh, it's actually had a quite a, a decent jump up over the last few days on the back of the news flow, I might add. Um, I'll give you just a little bit of, uh, I have the share register here, because that's quite a common co uh, question. Um, so our top shareholder is uh, Crystal Amber, um, who are a fairly activist shareholder. Uh, activist fund. Um, they're very, very supportive of us, actually, um, and they have consistently said they're in it for the long haul. They see good value in the business, and they've been with us for a few years now and, and continue to be supportive. Um, the, we, since our fundraising, actually, it's quite interesting. We, we, before that, we had a very limited uh, shareholder base, but after the fundraising, um, raising 27 million, we've got uh, decent institutional money, BlackRock, Threadneedle, and of that ilk that have come on board. And again, all of whom um, have, have uh, long-term hold, uh, long holders. Thank you very much. Any questions, please? Uh, Peter, oh, sorry, Chris. Mm -hmm. I noticed that MasterCard are um, an associate firm working with Facebook on the cryptocurrency Libra. Yep. Have you any plans to get involved in that? Cryptocurrency, uh, we've looked at probably not. Underneath that, the technology that's driving it, blockchain, quite possibly, yes. I mean, there's work going on. Um, but, but in terms of exchanging, uh, the obvious thing for us would obviously be a, to act as an exchange house or, or a, a broker. Honestly, we're physical delivery rather than trading, and crypto tends to be more trading currently. A question towards the back. Yeah, I'm just wondering, on your R&D, how much was it in 2017, 2018, and how much is it likely to be going forward, and uh, how much is, uh, what's it being spent on? Uh, what it's being spent on um, is uh, pr proprietary uh, technology. Um, specifically, um, I mentioned sort of one overarching platform. Um, it, things like that. I can't be too specific because it's fairly sensitive. So how, how much roughly is that? Was that in 2017, 2018, 19? Has it ramped up? Uh, it has ramped up over 2018, 19, yes. Um, simply because we've, honestly, we probably underinvested in the early days. Um, and, and given the businesses scale so quickly, um, it's it's a requirement that we, we have done that. I haven't got the specific figures with me, to be honest with you. And one last question. You've moved from um, expensing that. You've moved from expensing that to capitalizing sort of yes. intangibles and R&D. Yep. I'm wondering if you can talk about, which has had a big impact on your p and uh, I'm just wondering if you can talk about the logic behind that. Um, 
honestly, f for me, commercial officer, I'm probably not best placed to talk about that. Uh, ultimately, it, it's quite common to capitalise um, R&D expenditure. Um, so it pulled us in line with other um, companies within our um, within our sector. So it was not it, we were unusual in that we weren't capitalising it previously. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions, please? Sorry, gentlemen here, right a moment. Thank you. Um, of the uh, four major business sectors that you're involved in currently. Mm. Um, who are your competitors for the, for the biggest one, biggest in terms of profits? Uh, well, the biggest in terms of profits at the moment still remains the, uh, the FX transfer or international payments business we classify and the currency cards. And the biggest competitor in terms of noise is probably Revolut. Right. So uh, they're, the, they're the Russians? Yes. So they're, they're, there's a, f a number of companies have come on into the market, giving it away. Um, you know, it's literally free. So they're trying to acquire customers that way. Um, in terms of big competitors that that have uh, are established making money, uh, it's probably Money Corp, Travelex. Thank you. I had a question about um, you, you showed the, the trust pilot score. Yep. Um, could you talk about customer retention? Yes. And, and, and what your customer retention rates are like, and if you have any sort of industry benchmarks, if there are any. Uh, I can't be. I can't. Again, I can't be specific because it's been. It, it is asked a number of t quite a lot. It's sensitive. Um, what I can tell you, it very much is dependent on the product. So, for example, our retention rates on the corporate expense platform are extremely high. Um, on the currency cards for consumers, they're less. So you tend to find, and you have to market quite hard to them, because, as you know, you go on holiday, you, you might take a card, and you know you don't go on holiday every week. So it's popped in a drawer, and it's trying to make that card and, and that product front of mind. So we work a lot harder to to retain the, the consumer, um, the consumer clients that we do on the corporate ones. And on, on that customer acquisition, um, is, is it kind of above the line marketing? Do you have a, a, what, what's the main route to getting those new customers? On, on the, the new customers. Yes. So it's a mixture. Yeah, absolutely above the line marketing. So uh, brand awareness in this is very. I sort of mentioned Revolut. Brand awareness is very, very important to acquire customers here. Um, so we do things like we sponsor Sky coverage of Formula One, um, which we're doing for our third season now. Um, we do a lot of online um, partnerships, so the likes of money supermarket price comparison sites and that sort of thing. So we put a lot of a lot of store in that, making sure the products uh, competitive. Um, we have a big partnership network on the international payment side. So you know, property companies, for example, have clients that are buying buying and selling property. They will introduce us. That's a that's a, a very good way of acquiring customers because there's a level of trust there and as long as we're looking after their clients they're very happy. Gentleman here please. Yeah, on, the, on the broker license, the recent yep. RNS, can you give us a flavour for what opportunities that presents and presumably in, in, in coming to that the position which you're now in, which you hope to presume that there's some revenue forecasting and whatever behind that, so if you give us some flavour of how you see that. Yeah, absolutely. So this, this came about by, um, so, so our, the Chester business, Card One uh, Money, or was Card One Banking, um, they, they acquire customers that tend to be uh, not necessarily um, bad credit, but lower credit scores. Um, they find it difficult to get bank accounts, et cetera. And that's both on a cons uh, SME, corporate basis and consumer. Um, one of the challenges they have always had was customers applying, thinking they were applying for a bank account with credit that would automatically give them credit. And they were delighted when they got an account, but then very disappointed when they were, we don't do credit. And therefore, they were, they, the company was then acquiring all these customers, but then losing a percentage of them because of the, the lack of product at the other end. So what we've done is resolved that, and we can now give the credit side 
uh, and, and meet their expectations. The other opportunity is obviously on the, the fair effects business as well, because you know, the, the SMEs, the, the corporates that we deal with, for example, um, many of them would welcome the opportunity at a, at a good rate um, to, to have a, a, a credit offering, um, particularly for you know, whether it's uh, buying goods or whatever, it's short-term credit, longer-term credit, asset-backed credit, there are various types, um, and the idea of being a broker rather than a, a, a proprietary lender is we can have a panel and we can offer the, the right lender to the right customer, and that's the smart bit of it. All right, so I have one final question. Gentleman at the back, please, Chris. Can I just ask about these, the new challenger banks? So a lot of them are offering sort of free FX, low-cost FX. Um, do you think that's a big threat to your existing business because more and more people are going to be getting these accounts and, uh, you know? It's very annoying. <laughs> um, yes, it is, in truth. It is a threat. Um, there's, there's a number of challenger banks that utilize the FX bit to acquire customers, um, saying, free FX, come and get a card. Um, what you find is, or what we find is that within the marketplace, it's a lot of noise and it's bringing customer, customer expectation, the fact that FX should be free. Um, and those who are financially savvy, who's seeking this out, actually, yes, it is. It, it, it shrinks the market from our point of view. Having said that, for a lot of these challenger banks, you, they are app only, for example, or they're, they're, they're quite one dimensional. So typically for those customers who, who value a service, value speaking to people, um, then they would come to fair effects rather than necessarily a challenger bank. And a lot of these challenger banks, by the way, are, they're acquiring customers, but they're not, most of their customers, in fact, Monzo, I think it's 75, 80% of their customers still aren't paying their salary into their bank account. <coughs> they're just using it for small transactions, which ultimately is going to cost them a fortune. Thank you very much indeed, James. Thank you very much.